I'm here with Silke Berlin, and a famous recording star, and uh, uh, she's played with quite a few people. She's uh, originally from the New York scene, has spent some time in San Francisco and kind of all around. Yeah, Boston. And uh, Boston. So Boston. Europe, she's Europe, done uh, London. Europe, London. Um, who are some of the uh, different performers that you've, uh, you've performed with? Oh, uh, well, I sang with... Uh, Ming Deville when they were starting in San Francisco and uh, Jerry Nolan played drums for me in New York from uh, uh, Heartbreakers and New York Dolls. There's Paul. Okay, well here he comes. Um, I just did something with Jack Grisham from TSOL and Rick Agnew who's here and uh, I've done some work with uh, Don Bowles from the Germs. I did a duet with uh, Sam McBride from Fang. Uh, that's an Oakland band. They're sort of a legend. Um, now you've done several tracks with with Rick recently. Yeah. Um, did you know him before? I did not. I was put together with Rick by a disc jockey in Tampa, Florida, named Eric Tolpo, who has a show called the Ed Show Fanzine, and uh, he had had he and this other DJ down there named Sick Mick. Uh, started interviewing me as soon as I sort of went, but I have had a bunch of nervous breakdowns. So when I started doing this again about three years ago, really he heavily, um, Eric and, and Sick Mick started interviewing me. And at a certain point, I think maybe about six months ago, Eric said there's, uh, he knew I was going to move to LA because I was in rehab, I was in a rehab in, in December for heroin. But uh, he said, you and Rick, uh, are both in LA, you should do something with him, you two would be great together. So that's how we sort of got together, and I have been recording with Paul, and um, and uh, it turned out that Rick was report recording with Paul, which I didn't know, it was total serendipity. Yeah, she go way back. Yeah, and I, I, I didn't even know, it was just like a total serendipity, because I mentioned to Paul, I said, do you know this guy Rick Agnew, because um, this DJ want, thinks that we should get together and do something. And, uh, you know, as it turns out, they were like, Rick was there, you know, several times a week recording. So it took a while to get it together. <laughs> and um, we had to arrive at a song. And uh, then we decided, well, Rick wanted to do We're Desperate by X. So at first I was a little reluctant. Um, and I wanted to do that song, Blue, um, what's it called? I can't remember, Blue something that they did. And Rick wanted to do We're Desperate, so finally I relented and I said, okay, we'll do that. Because I wanted to work with him. He's a great guitar player. And he, I mean, he just adds so much to a song. Mm -hmm. He's got, um, he, and, he, and he nails things just in a second. It just a sec, I mean, he played, we just did this thing yesterday with Jack and Don and Rick and myself and Paul. And I think we're going to call it the Gestapo Five. <laughs> Because yeah. uh, it's that Deutsche Girl song by Adam Ant, you know, it has, uh, we, we're doing the bad version with the Nazi version. And uh, so, I mean, Rick played bass and guitar, and I mean, just nailed it in a second. He, he took the least time of anybody to do the song. Yeah, he's a pretty amazing talent. He's That's pretty amazing. And, and we got a really, a really different thing on We're Desperate. I didn't really know the song, so I was singing it wrong. And... Um, Rick said, no, no, I like that. Keep, keep, do, keep doing that. It sounds good. It sounds better. So I said, okay, but I was singing it wrong. So, so, but uh, it, there's, there's no wrong. Yeah. Well, I, I was not singing it the way, you know, was not singing it literally. I couldn't seem to get the chorus part right. And I kept singing it the same way. And, and then they all told me, no, we like that. So do it. So I did. Well, it came out great. I was really, when you posted that, I was oh, just yeah. amazed. Right. I had to share it instantly. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we've got, like, we put it up about eight days ago. We've got, uh, I just checked a little while ago because I wanted to tell Rick, but we've got 90, 9,300 views on YouTube in eight days, which is not bad. Oh, a thousand great. a day. If, if you could come up with five words that would describe Rick, do you think you could come up with five words? Yeah. Uh, Rick is, oh, you mean five different words? Five words. Okay. Any five words. Okay. Guitar, God, legend, virtuoso, prodigy, punk rock. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we're going to do uh, Paul. PNX.
scoot in. Three on a match. Yeah. Okay. Scoot, scoot in. Scoot that way. Scoot. Scoot that way. Next to you. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks, Roberta. <laughs> and here we are with Silke Berlin and Paul Rossler, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of their uh, projects they've been working on recently. Uh, first, we're going to start with Silke, and um, can you tell us a little bit about what the uh, recent projects you've been working on with Paul, uh, some of the things you've been doing? Well, Paul's my producer, and he produces everything I do, and so we've done uh, things with Rick, at Rick Agnew, and we've done things with Sam McBride of Fang, and we've done something with uh, Jack Grisham of TSOL and Don Bowles of Germs, We're and doing a series of uh, a series of duets with her and and her and various um, punk rock luminaries, and yes, yeah, she got Sam McBride, and we did she did one with Don Bowles, which was a Ramon song, which was really funny, and um, she did one with Rick. She did We're, we did We're Desperate. We, and we did it kind of, kind of industrial, and uh, and then like, yesterday we did with uh, Don on drums and vocals, and Rick on guitar and bass, Jack and her singing, and Don did a bunch of War Ape vocals. Uh, what are, what other ones? We did there was that, that's four. Oh, you did two with Sam. I did two with Sam. Ball and Chain and uh, um, Jackson. Jackson. Is that five duets you've done already? Yeah. Uh, almost enough for an album. Yeah, yeah. well, that's be, the album's going to be our original stuff, which is also cool. Yeah. Okay. We were that's trying cool. to get David Yao, if you're out there listening, David. That Eric Tulpo, the DJ in Florida, also suggested him. But Paul and I have done, I mean, we've actually done a duet, too. We did um, a song uh, that I wrote with Brendan Early from the Mutants called You Don't Own Me. And Paul, Paul produced, arranged, and played all the instruments on it. And uh, it's getting a lot of play, and um, we're you know we're getting a lot of radio play. There's a lot of DJs around the country and in Europe that play our stuff. I didn't even know that. I just found that out just now. What? <laughs> that you played, arranged, and produced that song? No, that, that we're getting. That anybody gives the slightest, oh, yeah. slightest crap about it. I, I've just, oh, yeah. I'm just. Uh, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot There's, of work. Yeah, there's a guy in uh, Colombia and Chile and Australia and um, uh, Rob Select in New York and Jill Hoffman in Florida, Eric Topo in Florida, Sick Mick in Florida, um, Tim Bednards in... And shout out to all those guys for playing you on the radio. Yeah! yeah. And, and, right. and Monterey and L.H. Schneider in San Francisco. And I mean, they're just the ones I know about. Everybody doesn't apprise... You know, they don't... Everybody doesn't apprise you of what they're doing. I, I, I only listen to talk radio myself. <laughs> I listen to news radio. Yeah. I don't have a TV. Le less political slant. You know. NPR. NPR. Oh, well, that's good stuff. Yeah. I'm not interested in current events. Of um, course so. Well, now, now, You're the only person I talk about current events to. <laughs> that's it. Now, well, you know, you respect his opinion. I do. He, no. Paul's very smart. What do you mean? No, I do. <laughs> now, now you uh, you have quite a uh, quite an interesting past performing with quite a few notable musicians. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of your work in New York and some of the other places you've been? Oh my God. Oh uh, well, I Jerry Nolan from the Dolls and the Heartbreakers played drums in my band. Luigi Scorcia from uh, La Cosa Nostra, which was uh, Johnny's last band. He was. Oh, it's a band. I thought it was a, a crime family. <laughs> well, yeah, it's that it's too. Both, uh, it's that too. Well, yeah, it is. Uh, he he was the leader of my band up in Oakland. He moved out here from New York to uh, do some stuff with us. Uh, Paul and I. Oh, let's see, Mink Deville. God, I can't even remember. Some uh, guy from the Jesus and Mary chain. Um, I worked with the Hooters. I worked with. Cheetah. I worked with um, the, um, the Offs. I, oh yeah, I, I can't even remember. Guys. Like Fast Floyd. Um, God, I should have my bio in front of me. <laughs> Whatever happened to the Offs? I, we slept on their floor. What happened? Well, I saw Billy at the uh, San, at the punk festival last year in San Francisco. He was playing, and uh, Frank St. Andrew was my sax player. He was up there. He was in the Offs. That goes way back. The Offs were together and. 78 for sure, maybe earlier. Well, for a while, they were they were together for for into the 80s too. Because Floyd from Mink Deville, Floyd, the f the first real band I was in was with Fast Floyd, and he started Mink Deville in San Francisco with Willie, and he had Willie. He got Willie to come out to California, 
Willie was married to an heiress named Susan Berman. Whoa, 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 what? whoa, whoa. What do you mean? You allowed to say this stuff? What? Of course, why not? I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's true. Well, because we're all gritty rock and rollers, and nobody's allowed to but be. But they're all dead. <laughs> they're all dead. We're not allowed to be heirs and heiresses. We're supposed to be. But they're all dead. We're all. We all come from the street, and we say street because that's because we're. we're we all come from. That's the right. We grew up on the street. Street, right? Have you noticed that some people say street and some people say street? And I've been very careful. Street. You don't know whether I say street or street. I I can go. I know both you ways. never say that word around me. I know because it's a secret. Feeling something, Paul? You're hiding. I'm from the street, as far as this interview is concerned. <laughs> 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 well, now, Paul, you've actually got a, a little you bit of a, a you got a couple of famous bands you've been in. Can yeah, you can you, talk can you mention a couple? I'd rather talk about current events. All right, I'll talk. I'll well, talk. We're going to get Screamers, 45 Grave, Nina Hagen, Josie, Fancy Space People, Josie and the Cotton, Fancy, Fancy space, space People. That was with Don Bowles, too. Uh, Don lost all the tapes, by the way. Well, you know, I, I was impressed. I, I actually picked up a copy of The Ark on vinyl. Oh, yeah? And, yes, I play it quite frequently. I'm a big fan of Italian prog. I was in, the, in a band called The Ark, yeah, before I was in The Screamers. Uh, well, I'm thinking about something a little more recent. Yeah, well, I wrote that. I wrote that before I was in The Screamers. I just, rec I just recorded it last year. But, yeah, it's... Um, a 47-minute prog piece. So you like the Italian? It's my favorite. Yeah, Il Belletto di Bronzo, um, RDM. Wow. Yeah. Uh, there's some. There's some new. Uh, there's a new like thing over there called jazz. Jazz punk. Have you heard that? Bands no. called Squartet and Neo. When I was over there with Watt, I guess it's not new. It's been a while, but there are some really great players over there. But um, I don't know. I was like 15, 16, so I was really into just ELP and Jethro Tull and. Um, King Crimson. My favorite was Yes, and most of them don't. I don't think stand up very well, but I still like Yes. Oh my God! I like Yes a lot. I like. Oh no. I, like, no, I really like liking Yes. I like liking Yes because it's it's just annoys people. It's, so it's really punk to like Yes. Is it? Isn't that absurd? You you probably like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer too, right? Uh, I did like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, but mostly for the keyboard playing. I like Pink Floyd also. Oh my God. Did you call, old, them, old Pink call Floyd them King pretty. Floyd? King Floyd, they're <laughs> awful. And I and I really don't like a lot of bands that I should like as well. I like the Ramones, he hates the Ramones. I, I mean, I don't hate them. They just yes. leave me completely. He gets really upset when he hears a Ramones song. I just get really goes, sleepy. No, really he, sleepy. Yeah, he goes. Really into, sleepy. He goes into a catatonic. Uh, psychosis when he hears the Ramones. Because I actually listen and hear them, that's why. <laughs> I don't respond to the oh my. cues as well as I should. Oh, I thought it's more people. The Victims, The Mutants, these are all people. I'm culturally colorblind. <laughs> no, oh, those are her bands. Yeah. Wow, I, I just said culturally colorblind. What does that mean? That's culturally interesting. Colorblind. Yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty nice term. Racial. But let's get back to current events. I'm culturally What do you want to talk about current? I don't what, know. What's, what's like don't you think it's weird that people still eat meat? Isn't that a strange yeah, it's really thing? Weird. Isn't that weird? It's like in it's 2014 and the people still eat it. Well, you know, I'm a vegetarian basically, but I do like bacon. Yeah, bacon. I'm on a soprasada kick because I was really tired and I thought, but I don't really like meat. I mean, the thought of how they make it is. I would honestly not tell. I would never say you should be a vegetarian. I would never like demand or expect anyone to be. I just think it's weird that people still eat meat. Okay, I'll tell you how you could get everybody to not eat meat. Have them read The Jungle by Upton Sinclair from 1930. Well, that got and the you FDA will never. Started, so the FDA you stepped will in. Never and now, eat meat again. Thanks to government regulation, your meat is now safe to eat. You know, um, this. Sound is going on, so we better oh, wrap no. this up. That'll have to be it for the current events. So, <laughs> th 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 thank you very much, Silka and Paul. This is Billboard for PNX News. Right Back to you, Roberta.